I am absolutely convinced that there is no other brand that homages other watches better than Christopher Ward. They might homage very well, but I don't think as well as Christopher Ward. And this watch is the perfect example as to why I think that. Before we get into it, I just wanted to say that this is gonna be a faceless video, which is really odd for me. If you follow me on Instagram, which you should, if you're not following me, go follow me now. But you'll know I've had a little battle with cellulitis in my eye, and I'm just not really feeling up to sitting under a bright light just to look like Quasimodo's slightly more attractive sister. And everyone make fun of me in the comment section. I have this watch on loan from Christopher Ward, so this isn't my watch. I'm not being paid or anything, they have just let me borrow this to say my honest opinions and my honest thoughts on this watch. So this is the Christopher Ward C65 Sandhurst Series 2 in the bronze, and this is an homage to the 1969 Smith's W10 field watch that was worn by the British military in the late 1960s and then was replaced with the CWC watch in the 1970s. The Smith's W10 was the last mechanical wristwatch to be produced in the UK to be issued to the British Army. And because of this, it is held in very high esteem by watch geeks, military geeks, and that special combination of person who's both a watch geek who particularly loves and collects military watches. Looking at the specifications of the C65 Sandhurst, inside this watch is the COSC certified Salita SW200 automatic movement giving you hacking seconds, hand winding, and 38 hours of power reserve. Aesthetically, I'd describe this watch as one of those perfect all-rounders. It has all those specifications that I'm looking for, housed in a pretty versatile case. So a 38mm case size, my calipers measure this watch at 43.3mm lug to lug, and it has 150 meters of water resistance. Christopher Ward has lent me the bronze version, which at this point is probably pretty obvious. But bronze isn't a material for everyone. In the past, I've always shied away from it because I think the patina is weird and I don't really want a blue watch. But in recent months, I found myself more and more won over to bronze as a material and the warmth it gives a watch. It feels almost like a rustic material and it really makes a watch feel quite vintage. But if that isn't for you, it is available in stainless steel as well, which is a bit more universally loved but I've been pleasantly surprised by how much I've grown to kinda like bronze. At the beginning of this video, I said I think Christopher Ward is making the best homages that money can buy, and it is this watch that has absolutely convinced me of that. A year ago, I would have said I would never buy an homage. To me, an homage was a watch that was an out and out ripoff of another watch's design and completely lacked creativity. Think Invicta or Pagani designs. It's okay if you like these. I'm not meaning to sound judgmental or snobby. They just aren't for me. I don't really like these watches. But Christopher Ward has completely changed my thinking on what an homage is, or at least what I think an homage ought to be. It is a nod to a watch and inspired by a watch, but with enough of your own twist on it. Kind of like a music artist sampling a song from the past or remixing a song and putting their own unique mustard to the interpretation of the song. This is what Christopher Ward is doing here and with a lot of their watches. And they do it transparently. This watch openly pays tribute to the W10, even carrying the badge of the British Army, but with their own unique mustard, namely the hands, which could be a point of contention. So this has the signature Christopher Ward arrow hands. The large hands look kind of different than what you expect to see on a field watch. But I personally like it. I know not everyone will. It's just large and chunky, highly legible. I don't know, I don't, I don't mind it. But there are some things I do mind. And I know when I say these things, they're such little nitpick gripes. But this is also what watch collectors do. We freak out over millimeters. All of my gripes around this watch center around the clasp. So Christopher Ward gave me this on a NATO strap, which I think is a perfect pairing and it looks amazing. But the stainless steel clasp against the bronze, it bothers me so much. It bothers me more than it should, but my brain cannot handle the mixed metals. 
and my next complaint because I have such small wrists. When I fasten the strap to fit me, the clasp sits really awkwardly, not where it's supposed to. But I think that is just a me problem. Here it is on my five and a half inch wrist versus my husband's six and a half inch wrist. So it looks pretty normal on him. So I think it's just because I have a weirdly small wrist and I would need to change out the strap. But those are just my little nitpicks. On the whole, I found this to be a really enjoyable wear. The vintage watch with modern specifications paying homage to an amazing Smith's watch. Honestly, how do you argue with that? I think Christopher Ward did something really special with this watch and I'm so excited to see what the future has in store for the brand. I think 2023 could be a real banner year for them. But anyways, guys, these are just some of my thoughts. I'd love to hear all of yours in the comments down below. Like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff. And um, here's a song that I am just making up on the spot for my patrons. Bye. Scooby -dee -dop -bop -bop. This is the first scat song for my patrons. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da -da -ba. Thank you, patrons. Jazz, jazz. Thank you, patrons, for supporting my channel. It really helps me because I'm a small creator. Thank you, Pope Tier, Pope Tier patrons. Scooby -dee -dop -ba -dop. Boop.